I hope you'll go along with this rather unusual setting and the fact that I remain seated when I get introduced and the fact that I'm going to come to you mostly through this medium here for the rest of the show. And I should tell you that I'm backed up by quite a staff of people between here and Menlo Park, where Stanford Research is located. We are born into a world of light and dark, sensation and emotion. Slowly, we discover where the self ends and everything else begins. Tools shape consciousness. A century ago, new tools shattered fundamental perceptions of space and time. New technologies spawned a new logic, a logic of centralization, segmentation, uniformity, and repetition. Okay, I'll select controllers. Zona, go for landing. Retro. Go. Lido. Go. Guide. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle, Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. As our world expands, awareness develops. As our awareness expands, the desire to communicate grows. Here at the Temple of Heaven outside Beijing, generations of Chinese have stood at this wall, clapping their hands, listening for the echo from the other end. One can even hear the conversations there. The birth of the mouse was in 1963 built it on a, in a clunky wooden box about three inches by two inches by two inches. Douglas Engelbart wants to augment human capability. I was interested in collaboration, really trying seriously to find out how to harness computers working interactively with a human. Today, a new form of communication has come to China, the Internet. <laughs> Traditionally, Chinese people have not been accustomed to communicating from home at night. But with the advent of the Internet, people's habits are changing. The big problems are getting more urgent, and if we don't get collectively smarter, humanity is on a higher and higher probability of crashing. Here in Japan, where space is at a premium, the Japanese have learned to create entire worlds in miniature. Miniaturization means that in a small space, you must not disrupt the environment. So you can't have large trees in Japan, not in the space you have in your home. You can have it in a park, of course, but not too many parks. So you miniaturize the trees, that's the one side. We've come to Japan to see how this island nation's distinctive culture informs its ability to make products that are smaller, lighter, and faster. Japanese garden, very small garden, eh? a small garden, but there are, there are some uh, pond uh, with a big cup. Eh? People want to grab the, the universe on their own plow. So, yeah, so that's why it's making everything making this smaller and smaller. With technology, even a household pet can be miniaturized and become a fad among children worldwide. Today, we're exploring the Internet in China. Well, I don't think we've ever seen an example at any time in world history where a society has undergone such high-speed change and such profound change. In today's program, we'll explore the design of small objects, objects for human use, objects for human touch. Today, we examine how networked computing allows the world to take part in the most advanced scientific inventions. So you brought science into the third grade elementary school classroom. Either into the cyber cafes in New York City. The mighty Huangpu River, once China's main artery of commerce. On one side, the Bund the city's waterfront boulevard of great European buildings, the remnants of Shanghai's colonial past. On the other side, Pudong, a Chinese city of the digital future. Here in the middle, the Chinese promenade on the Bund, 
expressing themselves through ancient arts like Tai Chi or a Western import like ballroom dancing. What we call information was once called storytelling. storytelling. Around the campfire. Media, like film, video, CD-ROM, and the World Wide Web, the World Wide Web now provide the context and the means of exchange. Heat and, and light. light. Heat, 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 and light. We'd like to believe that the introduction of postscript technology that made everyone have the capacity to be a publisher and a printer took that one step further and caused an explosion of the distribution of information that the original inventors of the printing press would never have thought possible. Throughout its 5,000-year history, China has absorbed foreign ideas and integrated them into her unique culture. 20th century China is a nation born of revolution, a nation now coming to terms with a global revolution. The most remarkable and important thing about media today is its ubiquity. It's invaded every space of our lives. But information is surprisingly hard to acquire. Between you and information is a tremendous amount of, of noise or static. Therefore, when people talk about information overload, I think what they're referring to is the way in which media gets in the way of information. America's vision to explore the new frontier of space made the risks acceptable and brought the rewards within reach. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. How do humans use the knowledge that we have to solve the problems that we've created for ourselves.